up to another good, good morning, time to go. Got that smile upon my face, cause there's excitement in the chase, this I know. Yeah, I'm going for the ride, and by myself I am alive, and I saw. Still I run towards the wind, and let the challenge draw me in, cause I want more. The Joe Mary Lakes are located south of Katahdin, not far from the town of Millinocket, Maine. It's an area I've not explored, so with a couple days free in October, I pack up the new-to-me Old Town Pack 12 and head north. All right, so here I am at the put-in on the Joe Mary Lakes. Um, I'm putting in on uh, middle. Yes, this is middle uh, Joe Mary. Turkey Tail is just on the other side of this peninsula here. And you can see actually there's a, there's a great um, parking area, place for the truck, um, nice beach, plenty of room to load. Uh, there's actually a couple camps here as well. And uh, not at all what it describes in the AMC guide, but um, that's okay. Um, so my goal is to get over to Antlers uh, Campground on Lower Mary Jo. Um, I'm hoping to sneak through uh, the two Cooper's Brook and then down Muddy Brook. Um, and that might add a little bit of time. It's about two miles to there, about a mile plus through there, and then about another two miles to the campground. Um, so hopefully it'll all go well. I made it earlier than I thought, um, even though I got a very late uh, departure from home in the rain. Um, but it's about two o'clock and I want to put on the water. So here we go. <laughs> Here's where we turn the corner into the dead water. So the big challenge now, according to everyone we've spoken to, is going to be finding the entrance to Cooper Brook, especially with these low water levels. And then if we do find it, the challenge becomes, can we even make it up Cooper Brook and then down Mud Brook and into Lower Joe Mary. But we've got some time, so we're going to give it a try. From its outlet to Middle Joe Mary, Cooper Brook Deadwater, named for its nearly imperceptible current, stretches roughly a mile along the southwest shore of Joe Mary Island, which is off to my right. The Deadwater is named for the Cooper brothers, Charles and James, who in the late 1800s surely cursed the sluggish current as they struggled to get their logs from Crawford Pond to the buzzing lumber mills of Old Town and Bangor, by way of the west branch of the Penobscot River. My own trip up the Deadwater toward Cooper Brook is a much more leisurely affair, replete with the sounds of grasses brushing the hull of my canoe, and birds perhaps anxiously anticipating the less settled weather ahead. We've been in drought, and water levels are dangerously low across New England. I remain uncertain how this will affect my attempt to use this route to access Lower Joe Mary Lake, but to be honest, I'm not fixated on the uncertainty in the presence of so much certain beauty. Making my way up the dead water, I find myself drawn to the deeper water found to my right along the shoreline of Joe Mary Island, even though I know Cooper Brook joins the dead water somewhere along the other shore. 
The map shows a channel of Cooper Brook hugging that shoreline, but it also shows two more channels snaking out directly into the dead water further up. Given the lack of water to my left, it sees other channels into which I am now putting my proverbial eggs. <clears throat> okay, so continue to move up the dead water here and most of any semblance of a route through appears to be disappearing into these grasses. But I think Cooper Brook is right over in there. So I gotta try to find a way to sneak in there. The once deeper water on the Joe Mary Island side of the Deadwater is no longer so deep, although it is deeper than the skim of water over the muck off to my left. Still I push upwards, toward the upper reaches of the Deadwater, hoping for a slightly deeper channel cutting into Cooper Brook. I don't need a lot of water, but I do need some. I'm becoming aware of the time. It's October and sunset is at 6.08 tonight. While I'll have nautical twilight when the geometric center of the sun dips to 12 degrees below the horizon until around 7.15, I sure would like to be off the water long before then. I'm envious of the geese and ducks that take to the air ahead of me, the ease with which they get the bird's eye view I so desperately want, the ease with which they make forward progress as my own momentum comes to a standstill, mired in muck. I've paddled and I've pulled, I've shimmied, I've shifted my canoe toward where the entrance to Cooper Brook should be, but now I'm stuck. It's impossible to go forward, and it's increasingly hard to reverse my course. I probe the muck with the paddle. It's deep, but I can feel some substance beneath it. Can't I? It is not without trepidation that I decide to disembark. Even if the muck is over my boots, it might be worth it. If I can cross this muddy flat to what appears to be deeper water ahead, if I decide to go for it. Smelling like swamp thing, but safely extracted from the muck without overturning the canoe, thankfully. I wrestled and brawled, tussled and struggled my way back to deeper water, and then to the shoreline of Joe Mary Island. I'm moving in the wrong direction. I curse the drought, noting the so-called, albeit descriptive, bathtub rings on the rocks. I remember the breadth of Cooper Brook on the map. I remember looking at the satellite images before I left home, thinking, it's too big to fail completely. Apparently I was wrong, and now I'm eagerly wishing for black flies and the spring with its abundance of water. I think I can work my way to shore here on the rocks jutting sharply from the sludge. Probing with my paddle, I eagerly move towards solid land. Maybe there's a trail running the spine of Joe Mary Island over which I could carry my canoe. Then I could put in directly onto Lower Joe Mary without dealing with Cooper Brook or backtracking into Middle Joe Mary. But that doesn't pan out, and I re-embark onto the deadwater and make my way to the Cooper Brook side, but well downstream from where the outlet should be. I stash the canoe on the shoreline and start hiking back up towards where I know Cooper Brook should be. So I think it might be time to call it. I uh, came to the other side of the deadwater, got as far up as I could, found a place where I could get ashore, and um, walked back through this heathy stuff here. In hopes that I would see 
the brook, Cooper Brook, but no such luck. So I even contemplated maybe just having a quick bivy here tonight and then getting up and early and trying to find the brook. But given what I've experienced so far in the time of day, I don't think so. It's pretty though. Out of options, I paddle back down the Deadwater and then out onto Middle Mary Joe again. Across Middle at the northeast corner of the lake is a stream that connects Middle to Lower beside Buckhorn Camps. It's a short stretch of whitewater, commonly called the Chute, which opens onto the southeast end of Lower Joe Mary and expansive views of Katahdin. So it's about five o'clock and um, I am on plan B officially. So I, um, I left the Deadwater, bailed on Cooper Brook and Mud Brook, couldn't find them, um, paddled back around through middle to the slot, which had no water in it whatsoever. Um, so carried through that or pulled through that. And now I am finally on lower um, with a gorgeous view. And um, and my goal now is to get to Antlers, which is, I think, a little under four miles away, and it's five o'clock, so I better get paddling. Lower Joe Mary Lake is the largest of the Joe Mary Lakes at almost 2,000 acres. Despite its proximity to Millinocket, it has a remote feel. Paddling the southern shore, I'm treated first to views of Katahdin and then to a stellar sunset. I'd enjoy it even more if I wasn't headed into parts unknown to me. A nearly full moon will rise just after eight, but I'm not keen on a moonlit paddle out of necessity. Rocks extend well out into the lake, and while the exposed ones are easy to avoid, the ones just below the surface have me checking my speed in the twilight. The forest is dominated by northern white cedar with twisted knotted shrubs barring access to the dark woods, but finally the beach at Antlers emerges from the gloom. I set up camp in the dark, completely forgetting about the moonrise until it rises over my kitchen. It's been a good day. Uh, so day two, here I am on Lower Joe Mary Lake, uh, beautiful setting, camped last night at the Antlers campsite. Um, there's only two campsites that I know of on this lake. Uh, I'm going to go and camp the other one tonight. Um, got in just about dark last night. Um, uh, glad the timing worked out. <laughs> uh, it was a little, little interesting at the end, um, but I made it. I had some sweet and sour rice, uh, curried rice with, with uh, pine nuts and raisins. It was gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful moonrise. Um, sorry I didn't get the GoPro out to take any pictures, but I was making dinner and my batteries were cooked. Uh, this morning was pretty foggy and the fog is just now starting to burn off. So I think I'm going to get on the water uh, ASAP here. I'm all packed up. Had a delicious breakfast of Ring of Sunshine and uh, some coffee, of course. And it's time to leave. 
I'm thinking about the Penobscot Nation as I put on the water this morning. The Joe Mary Lakes are said to be named for a Penobscot chieftain who, according to one source, was one of the most athletic men ever produced by the tribe. The Penobscot people inhabited these woods for at least 10,000 years before explorers and then settlers arrived from Europe. The name Penobscot, like so many words with roots in First Nations culture, is based on a mispronunciation, but it is stuck. I've been told the translation means descending ledges or rocky part, and refers to the Penobscot River descending from Katahdin to Penobscot Bay. On mornings like this, it's easy to imagine a Penobscot birch bark canoe cutting a wake across this lake. I'm headed this morning to the north shore of Lower Joe Mary, which is a stark contrast to the southern shore where the Antlers Campground is located. The Appalachian Trail cuts around the west end of Lower Joe Mary from Antlers and then into the 100 mile wilderness and onto Katahdin Summit and the northern terminus of the Appalachian Trail. If you were to follow the Appalachian Trail from where it leaves Lower Joe Mary at a spot called Sand Beach, you would reach the shores of Pemadumcook Lake in about two miles. There is a short stream that connects from Lower Joe Mary back toward the eastern end of the lake, and I've often considered a longer trip linking the Joe Marys to the Debskonigs and then back down the west branch. The north shore of Lower Joe Mary gets the southern exposure, so many more deciduous trees grow in the drier environment than do on the south shore. If the sun comes out later today, and it's supposed to, the colors should be gorgeous. The other big difference is the pockets of sandy beaches here, and it is one of these beaches that is my destination. So I'm at the other campsite, the other campsite, the one that I've seen referred to as a Caribbean beach um, on Lower Joe Mary, and um, it's quite nice. Uh, not a lot of infrastructure here, uh, but that's the way I like it. Got a nice fire ring. Uh, looks like the best spot for a tent is on the beach, and um, there's quite a bit of sand, sandy point. The water levels are very, very low, as we found out yesterday trying to get through Cooper Brook. So I'm going to get set up here, and um, then I'm going to go off and see if I can find some firewood and uh, explore a bit and get on with my day.
So it's been an absolutely stunning day on Lower Joe Mary. Um, I can't believe I haven't come to these lakes before. The Joe Mary Lakes in Maine, really fantastic, pretty easy to access trip. Um, not quite as remote as where we usually head, but um, but still just just really stunning. Unfortunately, as you already saw, we got or I got thwarted uh, trying to make the Cooper Brook to Muddy Brook um, passage into Lower Joe Mary, uh, but that's okay. Uh, I spent a night last night at Antlers, paddled this morning over to this absolutely fantastic camp spot on the other side of the lake. Um, really stunning. Uh, the, the lake levels are so low that I was actually able to walk along the shore much longer than I think you usually could. Um, got some reading done. My, my friend Rich King uh, gave me the immense privilege of allowing me to read the proposal for his new book, um, which is about sailing alone. Uh, and because I'm out here canoeing alone, it seemed rather appropriate. Certainly put me in the mood. It's absolutely stunning. It's going to be an outstanding book. Um, and yeah, so I'm cooking some gato gato, and uh, the sun's gone down. Going to start a fire pretty soon. With a belly full of food and a dram in my hand, I'm ready for the moonrise. So it's uh, morning of day three and um, got up and I think I'm going to just hit the water and uh, just do a dry breakfast and I made some extra gato gato from last night which is awesome cold. So that will be my brunch perhaps. But uh, we got rain on the way, hopefully it will hold off till tonight and we also um, have the wind picking up. But right now it is dead calm and gorgeous so I'm going to pack up and get on the water. Thank you. 
It's about a three and three quarter mile paddle from my camp on the west end of Lower Joe Mary to the east end of the lake. Clouds jumble on the far horizon, and Katahdin's bulk, which loomed so large two days ago, is now enshrouded in thick cloud. My forecast, which is also now two days old, does call for rain and strengthening winds, but not until the afternoon. I'm being a little more cautious than I would otherwise be, as this is only my second trip in this old town pack canoe. I'm loving it, especially the fact that it weighs just 33 pounds, but I have no idea how well it will handle in more technical situations. And a solo backcountry trip is not the time to experiment. So I'm approaching the southeast end of uh, Lower Joe Mary. And um, wind is picking up a little bit. Had a little, couple little uh, puffs, little little squally bits, a little bit of white water. It's calmed down a little bit now. And I'm about to round this point up here and enter what is known as the chute uh, by Buckhorn Camps. And the chute is not running, as I found the other day when I came through there. Um, so I will carry my boat through. And then I will be on middle Joe Mary. And that's the last lake. Uh, my truck is parked at the far end of that lake. So all in all, glad that I got up early. Or glad that I left early. Um, earlier than I planned, and um, looking forward to finishing up strong on Middle Joe Mary. Maybe paddle the east shore, because I paddled the west shore last time. Check that out. The Joe Marys have been a destination for hunters and anglers seeking adventure in the North Main woods since the 1890s. In 1895, Bert and Guy Haynes built buckhorn camps just up around this corner. I like to think about the sports, that's what the clients of these camps were commonly called. I like to think about them making their way across this same stretch of water a century ago. One of the most interesting ways sports would access Middle Joe Mary involved taking a steamer to Lower Joe Mary outlet stream. From there, they would be pulled upstream or walk the short distance to Lower Joe Mary, where they would then meet their guides. In the 1920s, however, a headworks was constructed and sports would be pulled upstream and through the dam into Lower Joe Mary. A headworks here at the chute later provided the same service to access Middle Joe Mary. So this is what the chute looks like on this incredibly dry year. So this is the passage between Middle Joe Mary and Lower Joe Mary, and usually the water would be flowing from middle down to us here in lower, but not flowing this year. It's too shallow in parts of the stream connecting lower and middle Joe Mary to paddle, but thankfully it's not too shallow to line my canoe through the skinny bits. That means avoiding a carry, which is always preferable, even with this very light pack canoe. I actually enjoy sections like this, even if they require getting in and out of the canoe. One of the reasons I chose the Joe Marys for this trip is because you can connect the lake so easily with these streams, as we know people have been toing since long before the first trappers, loggers, guides, and sports came this way. It's sort of like becoming part of history. Well, that's not good. It's capping pretty hard over there on middle, looks like. Now that middle Joe Mary is coming into view, I can clearly see whitecaps out in the lake. This is unexpected. Of course, the whitecaps in and of themselves are not particularly worrisome, but I know that at the very least, I'll be dealing with a stiff headwind once I get out in the lake. 
As I already mentioned, this is a new canoe for me, and at just 12 feet long and with way less freeboard than I'm used to on our tripper, I'm feeling more cautious than usual. I've already experienced this boat's freakishly good primary stability. In calm conditions, it's virtually impossible to tip. But a canoe only gains primary stability as it sacrifices secondary stability. And when the conditions get rough, it's the secondary stability that matters. Well, it just looks ugly over there. Oh well. I paddle up into the protected bay alongside Buckhorn Camps. As I peer into the camp's windows, see smoke trailing from a chimney, I'm thinking it would be a nice day to sit by the fire with a book. I paddle out a little further, trying to get a feeling for the conditions before leaving the relative safety of this bay. Looking at the map, I consider my options. In situations like this, I find dividing a big objective into smaller ones helps. Effectively managing risk in the backcountry is probably the most valuable skill one can possess. And a big part of managing risks is contingency planning. An almost infinite series of if-then options spooled up and on deck to make decision-making less emotional. On the map, I can see it's about a quarter mile almost due southwest from the point here to the point at the entrance of Cooper Brook Deadwater. Given that the wind is coming out of the south-southwest, I'm thinking I can paddle into it with my bow at a slight angle so that I can ferry across. Once there, I can reassess. With a plan in place, I stow my camera in the dry bag, make sure everything is secured, and dig in with my paddle. All right, so I made it to the, um, what is this? The uh, west shore of Joe Mary, middle Joe Mary. Of course, right after I finished my crossing, the uh, wind knocked down. <laughs> yeah, to be expected. So, um, so I can see the beach right up there where the truck is. So this is pretty much the end of this trip. Um, definitely got a little exciting for the last 45 minutes or so. <clears throat> it was blowing pretty darn hard and I pulled out. I found a little spot where I could sneak in, pulled the boat up, tied it off. Tried to uh, see if I could get any weather. I couldn't because it wasn't supposed to be blowing that hard. Uh, decided to take a little walk based on the topo map it looked like that possibly I might be able to carry to the road. That's why I have my orange hat on because I was um, because I was hiking and it is hunting season. Um, so I followed a beautiful little path along the water where it was blowing very very hard. Tons of white caps. And I, um, and I went ahead and uh, found a little camp up there, which is absolutely stunning. I always hate stumbling upon those camps. I feel like you're intruding on somebody's peace and quiet. Um, but nobody was there, so I did not intrude on anybody's peace and quiet. Um, I was thinking that maybe there would be a four-wheeler track or something uh, that might come into there. And if there was that, that would make carrying a much more realistic option. I did not find anything like that. Um, so I walked back down to where the canoe was. And it looked like the wind was backing off a little bit. You know, because when I did that first crossing, when I came out of the slot and just started to get on to middle, boy, it was snotty. There was... Uh, People ask me why I would consider putting a spray deck on a canoe. That's the reason. The water is coming over the bow. Um, I was trying to quarter it. Um, didn't didn't get into any trouble really. Um, but uh, but it was, you know, it kept you on your game. And um, snuck across to a little island, got in the lee of that, and it really was just started backing off and backing off and backing off and. Um, yeah, it was windy, but it wasn't too bad. 
decided to sneak in against the west shore here where I knew I would be sheltered from the wind. And um, yeah, it's uh, not bad at all now. So just kind of taking it easy, heading back, find the truck, unpack the canoe, load up, head over to the family. It's always good to head over to the family. Also, finally took the time to enjoy my Gato Gato brunch. Didn't pack my spoon, but I did pack the Gato Gato, my day pack. And it's delicious. Gato Gato may be my favorite backcountry dinner. I have pine nuts in this one instead of sunflower seeds. Fresh green onions from the garden. Peanut butter. Soy sauce, vinegar. A little brown sugar. Delicious. All right, I'm getting turned around here. Time for me to pay attention. Sorry for making you watch me eat. The end of a trip is always bittersweet. This one was way too short, but I'm glad I took the opportunity. I'll certainly be coming back here next season, hopefully with higher water levels that will allow me to get into Cooper Brook and beyond. Who knows, maybe I'll even attempt to tie the Joe Marys into a larger loop trip, including the Depsconics and the West Branch. But I have the whole upcoming winter to plan that trip. Excitement in the chase, this I know Yeah, I'm going for the ride And find myself, I 